We are actually moving from the Estonian experience all the way to Sweden. Uh, so from campus to boot camp, uh, extramural education in cybersecurity. And I'm happy to ask on the stage Gunnar Garson, who is the professor at the Cyber Campus Sweden uh, and then also the KTH uh, Royal Institute of Technology. So happy to hear about what Sweden is up to as well. So the stage is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here to share with you experience of taking university education outside the campus. Um, Cyber Campus Sweden, which I'm representing, is a new organization to bring together the public sector, the private sector, and the civic society for uh, research, innovation, and education. And I'm leading the education effort here. So, uh, the background is that we are, since five years back, training uh, soldiers for uh, the Swedish Armed Forces in cybersecurity. We, they're called cyber soldiers. And they're conscript soldiers, typically of uh, 19, 20 years of age, coming directly from high school. You can serve as a volunteer in Sweden until you're 40, but most of come directly. And in this context, we're providing education from KTH, my home university, uh, for the cybersecurity contents of this, this uh, office. Uh, since this is military training, we do not have faculty on site. Uh, so how do we do the training if we cannot be there lecturing and, and bringing about the education? Also, since uh, the conscripts are vetted by a state agency, we have no insight in how they're selected, what backgrounds they have. They, might not have any uh, technical or natural science background. They could come from social sciences or, or um, other fields. And also, when we started to develop this, it was not clear who would be the officers at the Swedish Armed Forces, what training they would have. Could they assume the role of being uh, professors or teachers for, for this uh, program, or how should we approach it. So uh, the conclusion I made was that uh, we cannot design in resources that we cannot guarantee, meaning uh, uh, well-educated uh, teachers in, in the subject areas and uh, a known background for the students. So uh, the format that we decided to, to have is for independent study, and I will show you what that means. So the boot camp training, as we call it, uh, is uh, that you focus on essentials. So Everything that this is not necessary to, to meet goals is stripped away from the, uh, from the program. And you design the program to, to meet particular goals. A very important part, which works very well in the uh, military service, but may not work so well on a campus, is that you set aside work time, not only lecture time, but actually the work time. And you provide a workspace, even if it turns out to be out in the, in the sticks, in the forests like, like this. So in this setting, we're teaching four regular KTH courses, two in basic IT on networking and computer systems, and two in, in cybersecurity. The first two courses are undergraduate, taught in uh, engineering programs uh, in the first three years, and the other two courses are graduate courses taught in, in year four and five of the, of the master's thesis pro uh, programs. Master's programs, sorry. Uh, they are regular courses, and they also give academic credits. So uh, the, the conscript soldiers graduate after a year, and they have 15 credits of undergraduate training, and they have 15 credits of master's level training when they are 20 year old or 21 year old when they get out. So uh, the way we designed it is that they have local instructors by the Swedish Armed Forces, and uh, they are typically serving two years, and then they go back to their, their home base, and new service coming in. So we have not designed in any critical teaching capacity in this. And all the contents, all the examination, and support from the instructors is done from the university, but we do not need to be on site for, for, for the training. So this is the format that I believe we should take outside uh, the university also for training other categories in society, professionals typically, because the skills gap cannot only be met by training young people into the profession. We also need to train people who are already working, and that's my, the main focus of Cyber Campus Sweden. So 
this format requires that it's challenge-driven with clear tasks, clear resources that are necessary to, to solve the task, but maybe not more than that, and high expectations. So here's an example from the computer systems course where the students in, in the first project design all the, the circuits they need to build a computer. So they're given a simple uh, building block called a NAND gate and, uh, sorry, uh, um, and they build as, as the final chip in this project the arithmetic and logical unit of a computer, which is a quite advanced chip. And that's one project. So the work is highly intensive. There are no competing coursework, as it usually is on a university campus, and as I said, scheduled work time, which is a key ingredient for this. And another most important point is that the students organize the work. They, never work alone, they work in groups, or at, at least in, in pairs. But all the examination is done individually, but the learning goes on together, and they support one another, so they're not so dependent on having teachers on site. So that's the background for, from the training of, of, uh, uh, for the Swedish Armed Forces. So what are we doing now in Cyber Campus Sweden? Well, we want to target professionals, and in all groups where cyber security is necessary. In healthcare, maybe you need to be a nurse to understand healthcare and learn to know enough cyber security to work with those problems in the healthcare sector. And you have that in retail, finance, a lot of areas, all areas basically in society are touched by cyber security and you need to have the domain knowledge in order to, to work in those areas. So uh, these are the target groups, and to meet those target groups, we need to be flexible in formats. University training is usually not flexible in format because we have the students on campus full time. And here we have professionals who are working at the same time as the training, so we, we need to, to adapt to their uh, needs and, and, and availability. And we do that in collaboration. So this is what Cyber Campus is all about, that we are working with university, vocational training institutions, uh, commercial uh, educators, and also local study centers where you can have the training. A format to do this outside the, the military context or outside the campus is to work in study circles. This is a format uh, pioneered by, by, by the, the pastor Grundtvig in Denmark and as been used in training in the, all the Nordic countries, where, where people come together to study together and support one another. So this can be done in many places in society, because individual study at home is not necessarily very successful. It's better when you work together with others. And this can be done at the local study centers that are exist throughout the Nordics in, in communities, in libraries, there are group rooms you can book, in workplaces and other, where you can bring a group together. So from the university, it means that we have to provide structured material so that the study circle can orient itself without getting lost. Here's an example again from the computer systems course, where you see that all the projects have sim same structure, preparation, a project, and a discussion of the, of the work. And that's, that's the whole structure of, of the whole course. Uh, all projects have the same structure. And that's to make it easy to orient and, and, and work independently of any teacher. Uh, the university role is, of course, to, to provide the courses in this format and also to team up uh, people who register for a course from various sites. They may not know one another, but they live in the same town or, or village and they could come together to form a study circle around the material if they simply get to, to introduce to one another. And, of course, the university provides the examination for this. So, what is the summary for this? Our learnings. Uh, first of all, we have to acknowledge that we're designing education for human beings. Sometimes we put too high expectations on, uh, on people, say, oh, we provide an online course, you can take it whenever you want. Um, it doesn't necessarily get priority in, in professional people's lives, where the, where the job is demanding, their family, and other things that, that are, are calling for their attention. So we have to be clear on, on it's possible for people to complete it. Uh, the, the attrition rate in an online education where people study alone is very, very high. Um, 20 to 30 percent complete the courses, but most of them actually drop out. So, so, um, and we have to recognize that many of these important topics are hard to learn, because otherwise everyone would know them already. Um, and it takes time to learn something important also. This is something also to be recognized by employees employers who need to allow people to set aside work time to work on, on, on a skill that you require. So there are many learnings there that to take away. So what I mentioned is that you need to have, from a university side, you need to have a very clear structure that people can spend useful time with get, getting lost, 
collaboration and peer support is very important. And uh, uh, active learning where very clear challenge tasks is necessary to, 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 to make this a good format. And uh, for the university, it means to provide education where the content might be readily available, but the format is what needs to be transformed in order to take courses from campus to boot camp and study circles. Thank you very much. so much and then again a great kind of uh, an overview of what you have been doing in Sweden and, and and I especially really really love like how many sectors you have included there again showing that cyber again is not a different domain but really really influences to life and, and security in each kind of different uh, sector as well. Uh, so once again uh, you should be able to see now the QR codes it's your time to also ask questions. Uh, I, I would take the first one uh, over here as well that we already had received before. So how many people can you actually Except per year, each year to the boot camp. Like how many, how many kind of, uh, you, if you just try to put it in, into the numbers as well? As the way we designed it is that the, the, uh, the, the crit critical resource from university teaching is, is the, the university teacher time. Mm -hmm. so, so we designed it to minimize that. Okay. So we're currently training uh, 60 conscript soldiers for the Swedish Armed okay. Forces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not the bottleneck uh, in increasing that number. So, uh, so I think uh, for an individual course, maybe a teacher could handle, with, with some teaching assistance from university, uh, several hundred. I, I don't think that that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. It's also the, the logistics of arranging the groups and so forth and, and following them that that takes. Uh, but that doesn't require uh, very skilled teachers necessarily. Okay. Um, so we are going to talk about also very largely and in, in the next also panel discussions here about the AI. Mm. Do you also see that there is a much, much more bigger role of new kind of also technologies that can help us to kind of uh, um, work with the entire skill gap and also in the teachers? Because like we do lack also teachers that are, you know, educating the future, uh, the, the future stars and in cybersecurity. Uh, mm. Do you think and, and what has been the analysis also from the Swedish side? Uh, and, and are people open to this in terms of also education regarding AI? I, I think this is a, a big discussion topic still, it has not settled yet. We have to recognize that AI is great for learning. Um, AI is also great for not learning. And this dichotomy is, is, is what the, the, why there's so much discussion. Uh, students uh, that delegate the task to an AI instead of writing the essay themselves and things like that. So we have to find the formats where AI supports learning and, uh, and uh, trying to, to uh, um, handle the cases where it's, it, where it's not used. But I think for, for, as a learning technology, I think it's, it's very good for, for challenging students and, and tailoring so they drill down on the things that they do not master uh, while, while skipping over things that they already learned. Yeah, so just finding the balance somewhere there that, yep. you know, it provides Certainly. us support, but at the same time that we still would have the brains that we also use. Yeah, for yeah, yeah recognizing that, that. Well. yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, but, uh, but mm -hmm. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's do again another round of applause to Gunnar here. Um,